This video is sponsored by Skillshare. It's time to grab your journal. We're going to get set up for September. Hi, I'm Erin and bullet journaling is a thing that I do on YouTube. Thank you so much for clicking on my video. If you can't already tell from my accent, I am from Australia, and here in Australia, September marks the beginning of spring. If you're in the Northern Hemisphere, I realize that is very uncomfortable for you, but too bad. <laughs> Flowers are kind of the default for me in my bullet journal. If I don't feel particularly inspired, I'm gonna do something with flowers. And it's just a happy coincidence that it also happens to mark the beginning of spring, so everything's working out really well in that regard. I also just didn't feel like spending hours and hours and hours setting up my bullet journal this time around, and this was a design that I could do pretty quickly and easily and still be happy with the end result. So here we are. I've gone with this pastel springtime picnic kind of a vibe. We're starting on the left page here with a quote page. I really feel like I've been relying a bit too much on my letter stamps lately, so I've decided to challenge myself for this layout to only hand letter all of my headings and my quotes and stuff. I just feel that by not using hand lettering, I've kind of been losing the skill, so I'm trying to sharpen it back up here. And I had all of these beautiful floral stickers and the Lace and Whimsy Studio Whimsy Mail, the last one that I got, I just thought would be perfect for this. And I had some stuff from the Archer and Olive subscription box from March that's picnic themed. And I was like, wow, it's all just coming together. My quote this time is, the deep roots never doubt spring will come, which is a quote from Marty Rubin. I always like to make sure that the quotes I'm using in my journal, which I usually just find through Googling in a vague kind of way, are coming from decent people. So I Googled Marty Rubin to find out who he was, and he was a Canadian queer activist, author and journalist, and apparently wrote a book called The Boiled Frog Syndrome. So that's pretty cool. The color scheme here, these are actually really my favorite colors, and I find myself quite often going back to these, usually at the beginning of a journal. So it's kind of interesting to be only pulling them in for this year at this point, at this kind of three quarters of the way through the year mark. But those floral stickers you can see on the bottom left corner of the screen at the moment were the initial inspiration for this whole thing. I will usually put up a poll for my channel members and ask out of two or three different pieces of ephemera, which one do you think I should use to spark the theme for the coming month? And this is what we chose for this time. So this is where I've started. And everything else I'm using for this theme was based around the colors of these. This floral gingham washi tape that I'm using at the moment came from an Archer and Olive subscription box and that lovely plaid in the top corner. Unfortunately, I only have one sheet of this, so I'm trying to use it sparingly throughout the layout. It's from Kmart from a pack of different scrapbooking papers and I actually went to Kmart to see if I could buy another pack so I could have more pieces of this paper to use, but apparently they don't make that one anymore or at least the one that I went to didn't have it, unfortunately. So I've only got the one, I've got to make it last the whole theme. We're gonna leave the quote page here for now because I need to work out what I'm doing on the cover page on the right side and that will affect where other decoration sits on the quote page, so one thing at a time. I'm using the Sakura Pigma Micron 08 for all of my lettering this time because it's a really nice thick, well it's the thickest of the Pigma Microns that I currently own, and I wanted a very bold clean line. I didn't want thicker downstrokes or anything, I just wanted one solid kind of line all the way through, so that's what we're doing. If anything I'm using in this video takes your fancy, jump into the description down below. There will be links to everything that I'm using that can possibly be linked to unless I forget something. And if I forget something, please let me know. But whatever you would like to get your hands on, jump into the description, there'll be a link down there. I also have discount codes for some of them, so scroll a bit further and you can see those too. If you have really sharp eyes, you might also notice that I have matched my nails to my theme. Those tartan nails were really hard to do, but I think I did all right. I did them myself, what do you think? <laughs> Since I only have a little bit of that lovely Czech paper, I'm really relying hard on a little set of pastel washi tapes that I have that are just solid colors. I'm layering them up a lot on top of each other all the way through this theme, as well as with the patterned one from Archer and Olive to really give me that color consistency all the way through. The floral stickers I'm using most of the time are PET clear stickers and they work really well, but every now and then they're a little bit too big. So when I need a smaller sticker, I'm switching to the Spring Garden washi tape sticker set from the washi tape shop, which is very colorful still, but much smaller and easier to fit in small spaces. And my favorite thing to do when I'm not stoked with how a layout is looking is to put it in a box and it always ties everything together. <laughs>
This is where the picnic element is really gonna start to shine through because I'm introducing some stickers from the Whimsy Mail subscription from Lace and Whimsy Studio. These ones are from the most recent one that I got. I can't remember, I think that might've been June? To be honest, I don't usually really go for photo stickers in my journal, but these ones are just so cute. So it had to happen. I did feel like I needed just a little bit of something extra on this page, but I didn't want to go too hard. So I'm using a couple of Tombow Jewel brush pens to add some tiny little flowers around the September lettering. When I do this, I like to keep the flowers really hugging the lettering. So they're up very nice and close and in little clusters of three. I like to do the color first and then jump back in with a fine liner and just add the line over the top. They're just that really simple three petal flower that you would draw as a kid. And I think they're really cute. And that's the first two pages of my September 2023 bullet journal layouts already set up. Before we get into the calendar spread, I want to tell you all about the sponsor of this video, Skillshare. Skillshare is the largest online learning community for creatives with classes on whatever creative pursuit you can imagine from art to film and video to music, but also marketing and freelance and entrepreneurship in case you're wanting to turn your hobby into a side hustle or even make it your career. As you can probably tell from my Skillshare homepage, I'm interested in just about every creative hobby there is. My first time learning with Skillshare was in mid-2020 when I took a few Skillshare classes on interior design when I was making over my living room, which turned out exactly the way I wanted it, by the way. Since then, I've learned from classes on watercolor painting, time management, flourishing, calligraphy, and currently I'm learning to use Procreate to create digital art. Also, if you caught my August plan with me video, that lovely window on the cover page that I made to match the rest of the windows through the setup, I learned how to do that with Mid Journey through a Skillshare class. It's called Mid Journey for Beginners, step-by-step -step guide to generating AI art with Arnold Trin, and I definitely recommend it. There's actually so much more that goes into generating a prompt for AI than I was doing on my own without having done the class. So I'm getting much better results now, which is great. I'm halfway through a class at the moment called Digital Illustration in Procreate, working with layers and masks with Sandra Mejia. And I went from basically zero Procreate knowledge to making this adorable little floral illustration in literally one evening. And I'm only halfway through the class, so I can only imagine what I'll be able to make at the end of it. If you're ready to unlock your creativity or learn a new skill, Skillshare is giving the first 1,000 people who use the link in my description a one-month free trial. What are you going to learn first? Thank you so much Skillshare for sponsoring this video and helping me grow as a creative. Now we're going to head on to the calendar page. This one is the overview of the whole month. It's a place to write down events and recurring things like what night you have to take the bin out and appointments and birthdays and anything like that that you need to remember can go on this calendar. September starts on a Friday and finishes on a Saturday, which means I need five horizontal rows. But that first row will only start from the Friday. If you wanted to, you could just draw this whole grid out in one kind of block and just have some space across the Monday to Thursday. But I like to cut those ones off and just have the days that actually fall into the month on this calendar, which sometimes means it ends up a bit of an irregular shape like this, but I don't mind it. I think it looks cute like that. This time I've made the boxes of my calendar four spaces tall by four spaces wide, so they are squares. There is an extra row along the top where I'm going to put the Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. I always like to start my months on Mondays just because that feels the most comfortable to me because I quite often work on weekends, so I like to have Saturday and Sunday together on the calendar. And I've set up the calendar lines with a grey Tombow Jewel brush pen this time using the bullet end, which is the not brush end of the pen. I'm using the N89, which is my favourite grey Tombow. It's one of the warm greys, I think. And I actually did this back in January too, and I loved how soft it looked, so I thought I wanted to bring that back. I'm also adding a little green circle in the bottom right corner of each of the boxes. I also lined that top row with purple so that it would give it a nice differentiation from the rest of the calendar and kind of act as a design element too to pull in a bit more of that purple. I always like to mood board a layout before I go ahead and use things together and I usually do that in a live stream with my channel members and we kind of go through all of my stationery and work out what looks good with the thing that we chose together which is really fun. 
I wanted to put another heading on here, so I added a little frame sticker and I thought it would be cool to start the word on top of that and have it kind of flow off. And then I made a terrible mistake. I got in there with my eraser because I penciled it out first. And of course I totally forgot that the ink wouldn't stick to the washi tape as well as it would stick to just the paper. And so it completely smeared the S basically off the page. So I'm having to go to contingency here. I'm using my purple, this is actually origami paper, which is one of my favorite things to use in my journal because it's nice and thin so you can fold it. I won't be folding it obviously, but I re-lettered September on a piece of this, but I've made it a bit too small. So we gotta go to backup, backup. I'm putting some of the washi tape down here. The, I went with the, the Archer and Olive one because it's the thickest, therefore kind of the most opaque. And I'm gonna layer the purple lettering over that. And that's just how we're gonna have to roll with this. It wasn't my design plan. I don't think it looks bad, but it definitely isn't kind of what I wanted, what I saw in my head. That's okay. We're gonna leave the calendar layout just like this and carry on to the next spread. The left page here, which we're gonna set up next, is for goals, favorites, and musings. And I actually think this one turned out to be my favorite page in the whole setup. So we've got three boxes at the top here, kind of stacked one on top of the other. They're horizontally oriented. The top one is for goals. The middle one is for favorites. The lowest one is for musings. What the heck does that mean, Erin? Well, goals I feel is pretty self-explanatory. It is an area for me to set goals for the month. Do I always achieve those goals? No, not necessarily, but I do like to set them and I like to have a place to do that. So that's what this is. The favorite section is like a little snapshot into the things I was into in that month in time. So any music that I was listening to on repeat, TV shows I was enjoying. I used to put books here, but I have a whole reading journal for that too. So sometimes I still do. If I really, really like a book, I definitely did for August. I had a few really good reads and July too. It can really be anything though, like foods that I'm really craving a lot at the time or whatever. It doesn't matter. Favorites, anything that is my favorite at the time can go there. Musings is an interesting one. It's a bit more ephemeral, I guess. It's not so defined. Whatever I'm thinking about at the time can go in there. So really it's just, uh, it's kind of funny because threads is a thing now and I'm not really using it that much anyway, particularly compared to when it first dropped. But when I quit Twitter, I started writing the things that I would have written on Twitter in my musing section in my journal. And it kind of helped me detox and be like, you know, maybe these thoughts aren't necessarily for broadcasting to the whole world, but I want to put them somewhere. So I would put them in my musing section. So now it's like a little look inside my brain, things that I was worried about or looking forward to or proud of or happy about. I guess it's like a reflection, but in real time, if that makes sense. Can, can you reflect in real time? Because reflection is kind of a past tense activity, but uh, yeah, you know, you know, that's what it is. I really love on this page how I've lined an edge of the box with washi tape and then matched the color of the washi tape to the color of the flower on it. I wasn't planning to do that originally, but then I put those like yellowy green flowers over the yellowy green washi tape at the bottom and I went, oh, that's too good, I have to do it. So I matched the pen color as well to the headings for each of those and I think it came out so pretty. <laughs> The next one is a one line a day page, which is the concept of, of micro journaling, I guess, where you write down just like one line about what you did or what you thought or whatever for that day. I was trying to do this as a poem kind of long term across the month, but I, I wasn't happy with it, which is kind of dumb. Like I didn't need it to be good, but I wanted it to be good. Of course I did. So instead of making it a poem, I'm just going back to the usual write what you did today kind of memory keeping version of this. And I didn't use any of that lovely check paper on the previous spread, so I figured it was time to bring it back here, trying to do the repetition thing where things are consistent all the way through the theme, but also conserve this paper because I've only got so much of it. So it's time to bring it back anyway. I'm gonna put it along the bottom of this page and then have the heading down the side there. I left space for it so that there's still enough room to write a whole line for each day, but also a little bit of space for a vertical heading for this page. Sometimes when I'm setting up a really involved bullet journal layout, it can take hours and hours and hours. But this one, although I still did it over two days just because it was raining in Brisbane when I was filming this and I lost the light really early on the first day because I was filming with natural light, it actually was a pretty quick and easy setup, this one, which is great. 
So definitely if you like to keep things quick but also really cute, look through your stuff and see what you can find that kind of works like this. And you could make a theme like this. It's very beginner friendly, I think, and also not so time consuming, which is a big relief sometimes. <laughs> we're currently working on my tracker spread. So the bit that we're doing right now is my sleep tracker. I only reintroduced this in August because I have not been sleeping very regular hours at all and I wanted to try to get back to that. I've actually been sleeping in a lot lately, which I don't love. I try to be, I'm not a morning person, I guess, but I don't dislike mornings. And when I get up early, I feel like I get a lot more stuff done. So I'm trying to skew my sleeping back to that. For August, I actually did a radial sleep tracker, which is like a circle with lots of little divisions on it. And I thought it looked kind of cool when I set it up, but I did not enjoy using it because there was no creative element to it. And I always know that's gonna be the case when I don't do some kind of creative mood tracker. So guess what? We're going back to my classic mood tracker here. This one has blobs. And if I'd remembered this one for August, I probably would have done it for that too, but I forgot about it. So the idea here is that there are 30 blobs on the page of color and I will draw four little doodles down the bottom of the page and those are each going to be assigned to a mood. And so for each day I can draw the doodle that most aligns with my mood and that is how I get to have a, an adorable page at the end of the month, but also a record of how my mood went and also how my sleep was so I can correlate those things. use the space on the right side of the page for? I hear you ask. Well, it's for my habit tracker and because I'm lazy, I'm going to print it with my Fermemo thermal printer this month. I have made this little calendar. I have a template of it that's blank and I have adapted this one to have numbers on it. I will also have a link to this in the description. So if you'd like to print a little calendar for your journal, if you also have a thermal printer, you can do that. And I made it for you with numbers and everything. So you barely need to lift a finger. You're welcome. I usually like to track six habits. I'm only doing four this time because that's all that will fit into the space, but also sometimes I just don't fill out my habit trackers at all. So I'm like, you can stand to pair it back a little bit, Erin, don't you think? These have sticky backed paper, so I can just peel off the backing and stick them down. And I didn't want to sacrifice any of that vertical space and put a heading above each one because I wanted to have still the decoration at the bottom. So I'm stacking them right on top of each other here. And I'm going to put the heading for each habit down the side instead, like we did on the one line a day page, just because that will afford me a little bit more room. And I could also cycle through my three pens again and get each color represented on the page one more time. So that's always nice. I haven't actually decided which habits I'm gonna track yet because it is still quite early in August when I'm setting this up. So I'll add those later once I've worked it out based on how things go in August. But for now, here is a placeholder bit of color for each of the habits and you can just fill them in in your head. love to offset every second line of things with a really light color. So we did that actually on the previous with the gray Tombow again on the one line a day page. I'm also going to do it on the sleep tracker here. You can barely see it on screen. It's the 800 Tombow in baby pink. It's very, very light, but I can see it in real life and it will help me line things up across the sleep tracker. So that's good. I really like having all of my trackers on one kind of dashboard spread like this. It's very accessible. I like that. The next two are probably my most boring pages in the setup, but also really useful. If I don't have them, I can't cope. So the one we're doing right now is a meal planner. I don't actually do a proper calendar for this. I kind of just do four weeks worth of spaces because I don't really refer back to it. And, you know, I'm planning 
a shopping list and approximately meals to eat day to day, but I don't actually come back and say, what am I having for dinner today? Because I just go by what's in the fridge and what's available. But this motivates me to know what's available in the fridge and to meal prep and to get my butt in order. Just gonna flip out my tip in up here so I can find the middle of the page easily so I can center my heading easily. I don't like to cook, so I really do need the motivation of something like a meal planner in order to make me go, I'm gonna eat well this month, I'm not gonna get takeaway food all the time, I'm gonna know what's going on, know when I need to go shopping, know what I need to buy. And it has helped me so much because quite often I just choose not to eat instead of preparing something. So if something's already ready and I just have to heat it up, yay. <laughs> I only started doing this this year, but it has been a big old game changer for me. So if you are also someone who doesn't like to cook, meal planning sounds like a nightmare, but actually helps so much. Trust me. And everyone's favorite old chestnut, the spending log, which is exactly the same in every video because I do feel that I have perfected it and it does not need to change. And I don't wanna try changing it and do something that I don't like. So I do it the same way every time. Two tables, left and right, are exactly the same. It's just so that I can fit all of my spending on one page instead of putting it across more than one page. I write down the things that I buy, I assign them to a category. End of month, I tally everything up by category. I put it in an overall spending tracker that's at the beginning of my first journal for the year. And yes, it is a very uh, in-depth look at the way I spend my money and only I get to see it. So, you know, I'm not embarrassing myself or anything. I blur it out when I share flip throughs and stuff with my journal, but it is very confronting the first couple of times you do this. But once you start, you get addicted and you start managing your money better. So I definitely recommend it. If you've never given a spending tracker a go, just try it and see what you think. You can always just not do it in future if you decide that it's not for you, that's okay. My content planner spread is the next one. I do a lot of social media posting, you know, I have an Instagram account for my bullet journal stuff. I have this YouTube channel where I post long form videos like this. I also post shorts. I also do live streams sometimes. When I'm not being a bullet journal lady on the internet, I am a photographer. That's what I do for work. So I have another account on Instagram for my photography stuff and I have a blog that I try to keep updated with my work of recent. So there's a lot of social media stuff going on. So this is kind of like my master list of when everything is supposed to go up on the internet. I made an in-depth look kind of video at how I use this spread so that you can check that out if you'd like to see if you're also someone who juggles a bunch of Instagram and YouTube and other social media accounts. I've actually been thinking I might need to adapt this soon, maybe, because I'm doing a lot more on YouTube across many different areas of YouTube than I was previously, so I don't know, we'll have to see. But for now, this is a really good system. I schedule things out using a program called Later across a pattern of posting that I plan out on this calendar here. So as I schedule things, I write them in here as well so that I know that I've got everything covered that I want to be covered, then I'm posting regularly enough for each of the accounts and stuff like that. And I know what's going up and when relative to everything else, I like to be able to see it all on one page like this. So it's very handy. Much bigger calendar boxes than the normal calendar at the beginning. These ones are always five spaces by five spaces currently, because that gives me more room to post you know, things on different accounts to write them all here. So that's what works for me currently. But do go and check out my in-depth dive video into this spread if you'd like to see how I use it, how it all works. There's a link in the description to that and I will put one in the top right corner as well so you can find that video really easily. to the very last spread for this video. This one is the first of my weekly spreads. The rest of these I'll set up on live stream. So if you would like to stick around and join me for some of those, don't forget to hit subscribe if you haven't already joined my little internet family. 
This is just the first one for the month, which will start on the 4th because I like to keep a whole week together on one weekly spread. So the first couple of days of September will actually fall into my August pages, if that makes sense. This is one of my absolute favorite weekly spread layouts. I have stolen it, borrowed it, whatever you want to call it, from the lovely Ruthie Journals so many times over I can't even count now. It is really good. So basically it's a grid. You divide your page into six and some of the squares will be for actually planning things throughout your week and the others are for decoration. And it's just a really fun way to use a lot of different stuff. You can put quite a bit of decoration on the page and it will never be overwhelming because half of it is blank. So, you know. I still had some of that check paper, so I'm trying to use it a little bit sparingly, keeping some for future weeklies as well. I still have a little bit of it left. Hopefully I can find more. I don't know, because I really like it. When I do this particular weekly layout, I like to try and make sure that each of the boxes are full. And that was quite difficult in this one because I wasn't using paper the way I normally would for this kind of thing. So I'm putting lots of rows of this gingham green that is actually from, it looks like washi tape, but it's actually stickers from the Lace and Whimsy Studio Whimsy Mouse set from earlier. But I did also lay a bunch of washi tape next to each other so that it sort of looks like it's just a solid piece of paper or something. On camera it looks really good. You can tell up close that it's lots of different little pieces, but that's okay. I really like my weeklies to look beautiful because that is typically what stays open on my desk all week. So all of my planning, t daily to-do lists, tasks, events, whatever, it all goes on here so that I can just glance at it and see all that information. Some of it's also on the calendar obviously, but this is where I look first. So. I like it to look nice so that it's a nice experience to have it open on my desk, visible all the time, you know, and then I'm more likely to want to pick it up and use it because it looks nice. And I think that's worked out well. I am introducing a new paper here, which I've had out on the desk the whole time. I just didn't reach for it until now, but I think it goes okay with the theme. I don't think it sticks out too much that I haven't used it anywhere else. And I probably will use it in the following weeklies as well. You'll have to wait and see. I don't know. Maybe I won't, but I probably will. Something I'm really curious about is, do you like to do anything else while you bullet journal? Do you put a TV show on? Do you listen to podcasts? Do you listen to music? I usually do podcasts, but I was listening to an audiobook while I set this one up. It was Love Me Do by Lindsay Kelk, and it was really cute and funny and sweet. And I think it went really well with the theme, so that's kind of nice. What do you do while you journal? Or do you just journal in silence and have like absolute peace? Because that sounds lovely too. I'm not usually a functional stickers kind of girly, but the Lace and Whimsy Whimsy Mail sets come with usually one sheet of those. So I thought, why not Erin use them? They work with your theme, go ahead. So I've used the Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday stickers here and I think they look really cute, but I hate lettering numbers. I really feel like I don't do them well. So it was really awkward to put those over the top and um, be like, well, that's gonna have to do, but I think it looks okay. <laughs> Let's flip through and see how all these pages look together. I'm pretty happy actually with this September theme. When I started, I was like, is this gonna be really disjointed and not work together? But I think I pulled it together. We've done okay. Once again, there are links to all of the items I've used in this video in the description. And there is also that link to Skillshare in case you would like to try one month free of creative learning for yourself. You can also find me on Instagram. I'm pretty active over there too. And I will be back again next week here on YouTube with another video. Until then, stay safe and happy. I can't wait to see you again soon. Bye.